Welcome to Wow of the World and I'm glad you're still traveling along with us on the big world trip where the last time we already exchanged Asia for Australia and in the first episode there you saw how we explored Margaret River way down in the southwestern part of Australia and from there the big road trip starts because we're going up north all the way to Broome and the first stop will be the big city, Perth. We hit the road with WA experts. The route between Margaret River and Perth was a sublime start to our adventure. In the Meelub Regional Park we visited the most beautiful beaches on the most southwestern tip of Australia. We also did a little wine tasting and headed into town with our travel friends Leonard and Marika. Wow guys, what a start of the day. We're heading towards Perth with the camper and on the way I saw about 100 kangaroos hopping by into the farms and in the meadows. So I went up close to film them and on the way I already saw some pelicans, some black cockatoos. It's an animal paradise and a lot of flies here. <laughs> Wow! So this month we are traveling through Western Australia, a state with not so many people, except for one place. Because in the city behind me, Perth, live about 80% of all the people in this state, uh, which is about 2 million. And the first settlers here, from Europe, came from Holland. It was the Dutchman called Willem de Vlaming who created the first settlement called Zwanenrivier, Swan River. And after that, in 1829, under the British flag, this grew out to be Perth, with a beautiful skyline nowadays as a result. Perth is the sunniest of all the state capitals in Australia and it is also one of the most remote cities on Earth. At night astronauts saw Perth clearly lit up in a totally dark land and they gave it the nickname City of Light. The place from where I have this very great view on the skyline of the city of Perth is called Mount Eliza. It's a park and it's also a monument to remember the people who fought in the First and Second World War. Uh, so a place you cannot skip. What's also very special are these beautiful red flowers. But are they flowers? How incredible are these baobab trees? The largest one over here is 750 years old. We already saw how the city of Perth has a great location right in the middle of nature. The sea is nearby and the woods. And there's a park called Kings Park and the Botanical Gardens which you must visit because it's one of the biggest city parks in the entire world and you can make a super nice walk along the coast. The 
The best feature of the botanical gardens is that they brought together the plants from all the regions of Western Australia in one place. And so close to that beautiful skyline. The highlight of our walk through Kings Park and the botanical gardens is the Lottery West Federation walkway. A super nice boardwalk high above the trees with some great views. Come in. So while Suus and Jens are trying to find a nice playground over there in the city, I'm walking back to the car and I took a little shortcut through the bushes. I thought it might be more adventurous, but I saw a sign on the way that said, uh, beware of snakes. So this might be my last video, guys. <laughs> During a walk through Perth we come across a lot of striking buildings, such as the St. George Cathedral, the London Court, the Trinity Church, and also the modern bell tower between all the skyscrapers. to dive into the heart of Perth and if you want some history lessons like the earlier settlements by the Europeans you're not in the right place here because this is the modern city you can find more history in the outskirts like Fremantle but this is Elizabeth Quay where everything is hot and happening architecture lovers will not be disappointed here it looks like the Manhattan of Western Australia How fun is this guys, we're at Island Brew House, which is on an island actually, in the Swan River and we do a little beer tasting over here, so all the beers are from right here. Cheers! Cheers! Ah, oh, I got IPA. Whew. The first time that I visited Australia was about six years ago on the East Coast and we saw so many animals and that's what I like best about Australia. But on the West Coast you do not have the koalas and they're super cute. So if you want to see those I recommend you go to Kohunu Koala Park in Perth, especially with the little one, it's super fun and a lot of other animals too. Hey! We just came in the park and we're already greeted by this uh, emu. But, like I said, we came for these mega cute little creatures. The small nature reserve has a population of 25 koalas, which is very unique on this side of Australia. They can talk. Hello. 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 What's very cool is that we also encounter some intruders. Some of the curious wallabies and kangaroos came from outside the park, but are actually wild.
Wow, guys, that was so much fun. Which animal did you like the most, Jens? Uh, our, our crocodile. Crocodiles? Wow. I like the kangaroos best. We camp on the outskirts of Perth in the harbour town called Fremantle. And as I mentioned earlier, that's the oldest colonial site in the area. In Fremantle we travel back in time. The countless colourful historical buildings resemble the backdrop of a movie set. It's a beautiful day, the sun is shining and it's the perfect day to go to an island near Perth. About a half an hour away with the ferry and it's named Rotnest Island, a place that you can never skip when you're in Perth. It is a wonderful natural island, but more importantly, it's the only place in the world where the cute quokka lives in the wild. subscribe and watch Wout of the World again soon to enjoy all this with us. Ciao!